early minute here. I uh, just want to uh, invite you guys to get some pen and paper or something to jot down a few notes with. We're going to do a lot of embodiment work in this webinar. So it's not going to be like a lot, I mean, a lot of teaching. We're, we're going to kind of like present an idea and then we're going to play with it because that's how we learn as children is by doing, is by practicing. And as you move up your vibrational uh, journey, right, your ascension work, you're going to notice that it becomes more and more childlike because everything in creation is very simple. And it is only the mind, it is only the logical ego part of us that makes everything very heavy and complicated. And you're about to learn why today. It's crazy how, how distortion, how the ego part of us has literally hijacked our entire way of creating reality. It has completely distorted our ability to create, and you're going to see how that happens today. You're also going to get the tools that you can stop at any time of the day and utilize your body, your mind, your desires, your, your problems, all to instantly shift something and find yourself on a new timeline. Okay, so I'm just waiting for a couple minutes while everybody jumps on with us. Thank you guys for being here on a Sunday, especially after 4th of July. Look at you all look very sober. That's great. <laughs> especially in America. America. Okay, we're recording. All right, so get a paper pen if you have one uh, near. As one of the things about ego consciousness is it's it's obsessed with intelligence. It's obsessed with seeking knowledge. And yet it's very forgetful. It's very sleepy. It's like you might have an amazing download and be like, yes, all of a sudden your whole world makes sense. And two minutes later, you're like, what? What? Because it's just gone. And so you, you want to have those aha moments. You want to write it down. And what I always like to recommend is that you write it down three different ways. Okay. It doesn't take long. There are three different aspects of you. Just like there are three aspects of creation, which is we're going to really solidify the awareness of that today. And these three aspects of you is going to be your ego identity or the small self, the wounded self, the you that was programmed by your, your church, your parents, your school, your society. Then there is that inner child, that curious, that adventurous, that that part of you that loves being in your body, loves being here and tasting things and touching things. And you're never going to not be that you. And then there is a super conscious you that is your spirit self, which means that it resides in a place of perfection. It resides in a place where you are already finished. It's already done. You're living the life of your dreams. You have that which you desire. It's all done. And so you have these like three different parts of creation. And if we were going to look at an atom, it would have the exact same three parts. We would have a proton, which is that positive, the light, that energy of creation. And then we have the negative, which is, is designed to pull that light down and create gravity so it can create form, turn into something real, material, real. And then we have the, the neutron. And this is the only thing in your way of manifesting every single one of your desires is what part are you playing that is neutral to your life? Okay, so I'm going to show you how you are either being too positive or too negative. And so you're only able to use law of attraction to try to create and draw forth things because law of attraction is different than manifestation. Manifestation is making something new, new to my reality, which requires a new. Okay, law of attraction, all it requires is a choice and a magnetic pull. That's it. So if you can create the right polarity, 
you have the right magnetism of the masculine and feminine, then you can draw towards you that which you desire. But what you're going to draw towards you is going to be something that you believe already exists. And manifestation is when you are pulling down, hello, pulling down from the quantum field of possibilities, which means that this is where the inventions come from. This is where the brand new ideas come from. This is where something is new. This means it's not the same people, the same places, the same issues disguised as new people. Which means you might manifest someone new in your life, but three months later, you'll realize that you actually just attracted the same person into your reality that was based on your former self. So this is where we want to start. I want to really start by showing you the difference between law of attraction and manifestation. Showing you how your manifestation creatorship actually works here and how you will use all of you, all right? Most people who consider themselves empathic, sensitive, light workers, practitioners, do-gooders, whatever you want to call yourself, messengers, guides, you have a very distinct dislike for the dark. You have a dislike for negativity, all right? You have a dislike for that crazy uncle that gets drunk at your parties and breaks something every year. You have a dislike for that because you see yourself as a positive, kind, loving, empathetic, compassionate being. And therefore, you want to surround yourself with as many of those type of people as you can find. And here's how I'm going to show you if you aren't really as light as you think you are. Look around your reality right now and see how many people in your intimate setting in your one phone call away are vibrating at the light that you think you are do you think you're the brightest light in the bunch do you see yourself as the most positive spiritually aware person that you know what you have to understand is that your reality is a mirror of you and so you might be focused on this positive aspect of you while there might be many parts of you within you that you might be very aware of that are vibrating in darker places that you have avoided and denied and therefore are they are projecting out into your reality. And so until you begin to pull your darkness in and look at it neutrally, you'll never ever manifest any one that is truly as light as you want them to be because you aren't as light as you want to be. And we'll, we'll go through all of this today. And this isn't a slam on you. This is actually something very profound that I am working on mastering currently. And this is why I felt very inspired to do this webinar because in 13 years of being on this spiritual journey, this right here that I am practicing 10, 20 times a day, has shifted my reality faster than seven, eight years of work. And so it really isn't about how intelligent you are, how many no doubt modalities you're trained in, how many certifications you have, how much spiritual knowledge you have. You could literally be using that to cover up your own shame. You could be using that to cover up your own guilt that you might not even be aware of is your vibration. So all you see around the internet is raise your vibration, raise your vibration, raise your vibration. But if you look at vibration as energy, too much energy will kill anything. All right. Too much sun. There you go. Too much water on a plant. It's gone. And so when we are trying to really be the light, be the light, be the light, be the light, be of service, be of service, study more, feel more, affirm more, right? good self-talk constantly, but we're not utilizing the dark aspects of ourselves to really move energetic, uh, in an energetic fertility with each other. You will always be the visionary, the dreamer, the one with the best ideas, the most helpful, loving, kind, but you will not be able to manifest investors, wealthy clients, 
helpful people to help you because you are becoming life without form because the form is the negative or you're in a dark night and you're finding yourself you are finding yourself too negative okay we all go through this on the journey so it's not a bad thing if you're in that space if you are it's actually a great place because you're going to get to know some of this part of you which really really needs your attention honestly and so if you find yourself too dark then what happens is you are too much form without life so what does that look like well if it was an empath or a sensitive person they would be in all kinds of spiritual development they would be meditating they'd be helping people but they wouldn't be able to attract anything that could really help them live the life on earth which means that they are kind of living the life of an angel but they're not like able to pay their bills or really do anything that they want to do here on earth. They, they are the person they want, but they're not necessarily living how they want. Now, if you're too negative, the way you're going to be living is you're going to have a lot of stuff. Okay. You might have, you know, collections upon a collections. You might have a lot of books. You might have thousands of essential oils. You might have 150 crystals. You might have a home. You might have, you know, a bunch of debt. You might have all of this stuff. But what you're realizing is that you have an abundance of stuff that's not really giving you a life. So there's the imbalance. Now, these two things are not the issue. And the entire manifestation community is talking about one or the other of this and that is always going to be manifestation so when you take a lot of negative form or empty space let's say form without life or form without flow of energy this is a battery operated experience over here which means that you're going to run out of money. You're going to run out of time. You're going to run out of resources. You're going to run out of connections. You're going to run out of ideas. If you have too much form and not enough life in that, or light is another word, or you're going to have too much light, ideas are coming in the middle of the night, you're waking up with downloads, you're just like, I, I could write six books right now, and yet you don't have a clarity to really ground and anchor the information anywhere, which means it's like you start to write a book and it's like you get overwhelmed or you don't know how, or you're, you know, like me, computer illiterate. And so you get flustered and I don't know what to do with it. And so now you have all this information with nowhere to ground itself and to become some sort of usable product idea invention. Now, some of you, just like me, are experiencing both of these simultaneously, okay? You're experiencing the light with no anger, and you're experiencing the dark with no life, okay? So this could look like a genius billion-dollar idea, but you're in $100,000 worth of debt, and you have no money coming in, okay? That's what that could look like. That's where I would say most empaths and sensitive people are, Maybe not in debt, but maybe they have to rely on someone to pay their bills or to take care of them, or they just have barely enough because these two vibrations create the money coming in at the 12th hour and barely enough because you're using law of attraction, not manifestation. So law of attraction uses masculine, feminine energy from imagination and you have imagined something you desire in your physical reality, and you are working to draw it forth, okay? So just recall for me a time. You do not need to share it. This is just an individual experience. Recall a time for me that you are really working on bringing something to you, whether as a person, place, or thing. And notice what came instead. Notice that if it did come, how did it end? What was the end result? Not in the beginning, but at the end. Because ultimately, when you're using the masculine, the feminine, the positive and the negative only to manifest, one point is going to be a little bit heavier than the other. And so the light energy is going to be on the surface for you to see. And the dense part or the negative part of this charge is going to be underneath. All right? All is going to be underneath. 
And so you're not going to see what's underneath this manifestation until you get about three weeks to three months to three years in. Because every manifestation or law of attraction attraction is in a cycle. All right. And it is in a cycle of life, just like everything that exists. And so when you are working to draw something forward, like, oh, I'm going to manifest my special person. I'm going to do this. And you're not manifesting at all because you're trying to get your ex back. You know, and you're hoping that he's going to be a different version of you because you're affirming differently. And this will work on the surface. But here's why it doesn't work forever. It's because the places within you that were in fear, shame, judgment, right? Resentment, loss, grief. These places within you have never really reached the surface level, at least in your creation part. You know, when you're creating your reality, you don't go, oh yeah, come over here, shame. I want you to be a part of this manifestation. No, you don't. You say, I want this because. And a lot of the times, the reason why you want something is because of the shame. You want the success because you feel ashamed that you have all these beautiful ideas and you have all this momentum and you have all these inventions, but you can't manifest the right clients. That's a shame. That feels a shame. I've been there. Trust me. Or as the light, you know, our job is not to be the unicorn perf perfect friend all the time. Part of being the light is shining the, the situation to someone else. And it might be a negative situation that someone needs to see. And then we feel guilty for that. You know, have you ever had to hurt someone or hurt someone accidentally because that's what they were attracting? Have you ever had to be a part of someone's shame protocol and accidentally shame them unintentionally? Well, empaths, we don't be like, oh, that was an accident. Let that go. No, we carry that guilt with us. And then it accumulates in the negative section of our creation tools. So in creation, there's always going to be three points. There's going to be the positive, the negative, and the neutral. And your dreams that you have in your heart that probably feel so unrealistic to you because you didn't put them there. Your higher self and God put them there. And so higher self knew that it wasn't going to just be you who manifested it. It was going to be every person in the world if it, if it took the need for it. But you were going to be in alignment of it if you used your energy correctly. So when you're using law of attraction, you're working on something that already exists, that you have a belief that is going to make you happier, better, richer, uh, more joyful, thinner, and you are working to draw that towards you. So you're using a lot of life force energy to basically manifest another lesson because on the tail end of whatever you attract to you will also be the parts of you you don't like. So if you have some shame you're hiding and you're working on manifesting a partner, all right. And you're positive affirming and you're saying wonderful things about yourself. And this person shows up and starts saying the exact things that you're saying about yourself. Oh, my God, you're beautiful. You're chosen. You're enough. I love you. And you're like, oh, this is it. That's what I've been saying about myself. Well, what you've also been saying about yourself is some negative things that you are in judgment of that are below the surface. And so all of a sudden, three months in, this person starts to reenact and recite some of those darker parts of you. And you're going, hold on a second. No, I, I am love and I am this. And, and you are also shame and you are also guilt and you are also resentment. And, and all of a sudden you find yourself in resentment again and, and you're thinking, oh, what went wrong? Absolutely nothing because creation doesn't get it wrong. Our focus, our intention, our awareness is incorrect. And so it is 100% of the time creation is balanced and perfect. And because the universe does not care if it delivers something that's going to hurt you or help you, it is literally just giving you the essence of what you are. Then by name, you are an alchemist because an alchemist is an alchemist, which uses all parts of itself. The alchemist is going to take the whole thing of lead 
and transmutate it into gold, okay? But what we're doing is we're looking at the gold part of ourselves and we're trying to bring gold to us and we're unaware that we're also going to attract lead at the back end of it or it's going to be fool's gold. And so the alchemist who does not use all parts of themselves always attracts more pain. Yes, it will be available, guys. Uh, the, the, the webinar will be available. All right. And we're going to put all the details in the chat for you. And then I'm sure afterwards we will post out how you follow up and all that good stuff. All right. So the alchemist is the one who is going to look at all parts of themselves neutrally. So when we're creating something for the first time, let us say you want a dream home that you've never seen before, or you've seen like maybe 10 different houses, but you've never seen one that's got all of those parts or a relationship that is like from the movies. Okay. Or health that doctors don't believe in or money from manifesting it from just playing. Okay. Some sort of unbelievable matrix program manifestation is usually what we all want because we all want to be out of the system we all want to live in sovereign financial freedom we all want health and vitality we all want loving compassionate uh energetic joyful partners right so these aren't like these aren't like big asks here this is just common humanity that we're asking for but when we come from a programmed world then we're coming in as the program who is playing the observer and this is where we have been failing is our darkness isn't the problem the light isn't the problem the neutral observer the one that is looking at both of these parts to make something out of it, as the artist would, is the one that is in judgment. And judgment takes your field from being plugged in, which is prosperity. Think about when your phone is plugged in. It stays 100%. It, no matter how much you use your phone while it's plugged in, it's 100%. Now, you take your phone off the charger and you go out for the day. And all of a sudden, you look, it's like 6 o'clock a day, it's like... 20% left. What do you do? I got to find a charger. Okay. I got to recharge. Now we think that this is what sleep does to us, but this is not what happens in manifestation because when you have judgment for any part of yourself, then you are no longer coming with a cord that can plug in. You're now a remote that only has batteries. OK, so a remote that works on a TV does not plug into the wall. Maybe some of them do, but a lot of them just come with batteries. And I would say that 98 percent of the planet is operating from battery operated power, which means they have to plug into food. They have to plug into jobs. They have to plug into, you know, some sort of channeled message. They have to plug into joy. They have to plug in somewhere. They are not running joy. They're not running energy. They're not running ideas. They have to get inspired. Okay. Or they have to get some sort of intuition or a charge. So think about the ways that you recharge. How do you recharge your battery? And here's how you know if you are battery operated or plugged in. Because we're multidimensional, there's going to be areas of your life where you are plugged in. And these are the parts that were not shamed and guilted in childhood. These are going to be the places that are just in flow. And this, some people who are, are raised in comfortable finances homes, they weren't shamed and guilted for money. So no matter what they do or in life, their money line seems to be fine, even if they're having a dark night of the soul. All right. But if your money line or your creative uh, re relationship with economics was shamed or guilted or there was a lot of fear in your home then that part of you is going to be battery operated okay so let's break you apart just so it is very simple and say that, that you are you have a either a charge or a battery operation of time 
of relationships, of your own health, and money or freedom, okay, which is kind of the same. So if we were going to look at you from these four different aspects of this virtual reality game, you would say, is time plugged in for me, which means I always have enough time. I have a supply of time. I don't really run out of time. I don't find myself in a hurry, but I also don't have too much time because I'm running my creative energy. Some people have too much time where they're plugged in, but they don't have any apps on their phone. Okay. So again, you're going to have to, to gauge this. Notice how I didn't say judge this. We're bringing awareness to where we are because acceptance and acknowledgement is the first shift in observership. All right. If I can accept, oh yeah, I'm totally battery operated with money, but I'm plugged in with time. I got tons of time, but with money, I'm battery operated. Okay. Well, you were shamed in childhood. No big deal. All right. Now, who are you in relationships? Do they drain you? Are you like, oh, I got to go be alone for a while and like recharge. Okay. Or are you just plugged in where you can just give and give and give and give and you don't ever burn out? I would say that the relationship that you are having with the closest people in your reality is where I would look. Because we always have enough energy to give to strangers or our clients or, you know, someone else's kids, but our own, we might be finding that we're burnt out or we're overwhelmed or we're triggered. And so you can analyze that or you could gauge that. Now look at the health and vitality of your own body right? Are you running source energy? Do you feel like as your spirit becomes more alive in your body that your body's getting younger? Do you feel that you can move faster than you did five years ago? Or are you getting a little sluggish there? Do you feel like there's certain places of your body that are in pain? All right. That are not, that are not filled up with life. Does your body have joy and excitement of its own existence? Or does it wake up in pain or suffering and so again this isn't something you have to figure out right now but we're just we're creating a little bit of space between our story our problem our solution and the observer within and this is going to be the way that you can check in with yourself and reflect with yourself and shift all throughout the day so you can create balance and flow in every area regardless this is the coolest thing about alchemy you guys is you don't have to go in and change your childhood you don't have to go change your programs because the thing is is the level of darkness that you inherited from your childhood or from that breakup or from that bankruptcy or whatever situation you were in all it did was it doubled up your light because light and dark are always going to be equal in your reality. And this is why when you're on a spiritual journey and you start to really understand the light and really start to be the light, all of a sudden you're surrounded in darkness. It's like I'm affirming and now darkness seems like it's chasing me. I'm being attacked. I'm being judged. Oh, my God. I didn't know that was happening in the world. I didn't know that was happening in the world. And so as your illumination increases, the dark will always match your light. Always, 100% of the time, which means if you were a very bright light and you came to Earth to be part of this big shift, you are probably finding yourself in quite a dark childhood because light and dark have to match, which means your light was huge and so so is your dark, all right? Or maybe you went through an awakening after a narcissistic relationship. OK, and see a narcissistic relationship and an empath relationship are very much like the positive and the negative energies that we are here to play with, play with. So look at this in all creation, an atom, OK, a pod, a, a, a proton, a neutron, electron. There you go. Now I can create anything that is a quantum particle. It is a working particle. It's got it's it's going to move. It's going to be alive. All right. So are you. Now, let's look at your why, all right? So if you understand that law of attraction is going to be mostly used by your negative aspects, your positive aspects, the light within you has no desire to attract anything here. It wants nothing. 
because it is everything. So whenever you are playing with law of attraction, it is always coming from your negative side. Always, because that's the only part of you in lack. So let me introduce you to these parts. Okay, on your right side, which is where super consciousness is, on the right side, you have five fingers of a hand. And I'm going to show you how God created us to be able to see all aspects within our own bodies. On the right side of your hand, you are going to have the fingers that represent the, the personality of your higher self. The personality of your higher self is confidence, right? Not arrogance, confidence, like a child dressed up as Batman right at the dinner table that's confidence doesn't care what anybody thinks just being who they want to be confident comfortable in their own skin they are deserving because they know they are worthy which means they have expect miracles they expect to have what they want to have they are in that deserving space they do not question whether they can have something all right courageous courageous because they know they can't lose they know they're immortal they know that this is just a game so there is no fear and instead of grief or loss they're constantly putting new life into empty spaces they're planting plants in in empty spaces they're creating life and they are unconditional love that's what that's what your higher self is for everyone, including you. Now, let's go on the other side. Where's your negative charge? Just as important, just as powerful in creation. Now, it's not very powerful if you're not trying to create something, because if you didn't have this body, you wouldn't care at all about the dark, because you wouldn't need it. You wouldn't need it to create form. You wouldn't need anything to anchor your light down right? Just like if sperm wanted to be a sperm for the rest of its life, it would not want to be near an egg. So the egg is the negative charge, the sperm is the positive, and they need each other, okay? So when you're positive, you've got five fingers, and in this hand, instead of confidence, you now have shame. You have insecurity, because the world took your confidence and said, who do you think you are? Why do you get to do that? You're too loud. You're too shiny. You're, you're, you're asking too many questions. You're asking for too much. So that becomes shame. Now you do things by just being yourself. Like my three-year-old son, you know, who is just new to the planet, asked loudly, why is that man so fat? It was a very neutral, non-judgmental curiosity of how did that person get so big? But how do you think that person received it, right? And how do you think I felt as a mother? I felt guilt, but it was inherently neutral. It was a curiosity, okay? This is how we get guilted by being ourselves, by asking the wrong questions, by asking for, for what we know we deserve to the wrong people. Right. When we live with people who are in lack and scarcity and shame and guilt and fear, and we come asking for our needs to be met, we are quickly guilted and shamed for it. And so it becomes an aspect of us. It becomes a, its own identity with us. Your shame has a very real personality and it thinks, it desires, it speaks, it acts in your behalf. And so fear comes from disconnection. So if I'm a battery, how do you guys feel when you're out and about in the middle of nowhere and your phone is on 1%? That's some fear right there. Okay. So fear is like being in the middle of the woods or the middle of nowhere, not knowing where you are and having your battery on 1%. Your spirit is always connected. So it never feels fear. But this part of you, who's been ripped out from the wall, you've been told not to shine, not to laugh, not to sing, not to dance. Don't do any of the things that keeps you connected to source. You're taught to unplug yourself 
and then find some batteries. And so batteries are food, batteries are people, batteries are jobs. And we go to try to be good children and good adults, try to find a way to power ourselves. And because that is what keeps us from either being shamed, guilted, or in terror of our own disconnection. All right. So now let's go to loss. See, a spirit never feels loss. And those of you who can channel spirit, which I highly recommend if you guys are not channeling your higher self by now, take my class on channeling because every one of you, if you're not channeling your higher self, who are you channeling? That means you're channeling ego all day and you'll never get out of judgment for yourself because your higher self never judges you ever or anyone else. Okay. So if I'm disconnected from my higher self and I'm plugged into this fearful mother who is my battery, well, guess what? That's going to be my, my food source, my charging source. That's going to be, I'm going to need to stay close to people like her. And I'm probably going to end up marrying someone like that because that's the only battery power I know. Okay. So when we begin to lose things, the ego believes that now it's going to lose more. Even if now I could lose you. That's when the obsession starts. That's when the twin flame starts. Okay. And so loss is inherently part of your negative charge. It is part of your ego identity. And on the other side, there is nothing the spirit can lose because even if someone decided to step out of their body, it would be the same for the spirit as if they were in the body. There would be no change in conversation. And those of us who can channel spirit know that when you guys lose your grandparents or your loved ones, they are closer to you than they were before because they don't have ego. But you can't see them because your ego is looking for them, not your spirit. Okay? So if you are then in all of these things, well, then you're going to find yourself in either an array different kind of expression of anger. Because a child who cannot get their way is going to throw tantrums. Now, our tantrums have not belittled from childhood. They've just changed. We don't throw our body on the floor at a target, right? Asking for a toy. But we do get sick, so we don't have to go to work, right? We do spend too much money because we're tired of feeling like we don't have the right stuff. Our tantrums now become self-sabotage. And so it's like, well, we live for this moment because psh, I'm not going to have what I want anyways. And so our tantrums have not changed. And so anger is actually going to be one of your power tools in creation. I have never seen anger as a bad thing or a good thing. Now, misplaced anger, repressed anger, denied anger, uh, betrayed anger. Well, now you're looking at a beast. But just natural childlike anger, it comes up and out and it moves someone either into a higher frequency or a lower frequency. And so my definition of anger is grief's bodyguard. Your anger is protecting sadness. It's protecting loss. It's protecting your disempowerment. Okay. And so that's what anger is for. But empaths and sensitives, we feel that we don't have permission to be angry because we do not want someone to feel bad around us. And so we swallow it and it becomes all different kinds of expression, maybe not anger, but it becomes an eating disorder or it becomes a people pleasing tool or it becomes the martyr energy. It will shape shift because life does not, it finds a way. Energy doesn't die, changes form. So suppressed shame, so suppressed shame will look like two ways. Either you live under a bridge or you live under a bridge that you own. You're either going to be hyper successful or you're going to be unsuccessful. But shame is shame. That's why money can't heal shame and money can't heal guilt. And so we've tried this and we're realizing that we've got to go to source. Now, if this was a shadow work class, I'd be like, you guys really need to work on your shame, your guilt, all this stuff but you don't. What if I told you that without the shame and the guilt and the fear and the loss and the anger, you would never be able to manifest your dreams. This is something that literally has kept me stuck for 
10, 20 years, if not my whole life, this point right here that I'm going to make. Because what do you do when you think about your shame? What do you do when you think about the things that you've done in the past that you didn't know better or were done by accident or, you know, you did it, but you were in desperation and scarcity, okay? And you can't take it back. And ego is reminding you of that. So your higher self manages your right hand positive personality. Your ego manages your left hand negative charge of disconnection, separation, pain, trauma, and limitation. All right. So you've got Superman and Lex Luthor all in your own body. Now, if you were going to look at this and you'd be like, wow, that's pretty intense. Now, the brighter your light, the greater your dark is going to be. And trust me, after 13 years of coaching you guys, I've seen it all. And I've seen it all within me. Now, why does coaching work? Why do you guys get therapists? Why do you hire mentors? Why do you take these classes? And the reason why is this, is because in order for you to use the negative energy, to use your shame, to use your guilt with your light, you're going to need that third aspect. You're going to need someone who does not judge you. Like, I've heard people tell me the worst possible things that they've ever done. And I'm like, really? That's it? I can see why you did that. And they're like, really? And then it shifts because I'm not judging. And so there is something we call the mother cell in quantum biology or in biochemistry. And the mother cell is when the uh, embryo kind of splits into those four cells in the molecule sections. Now, those four cells kind of make up a cube and that's what the universe looks like in sacred geometry it's a cube it's like a container so i want you to feel into this idea of a container for a minute if a sperm is what's called a positive charge and an egg is a negative charge is the egg bad is it evil it wants to devour the sperm it wants to change the sperm's identity it will never be a sperm again it's going to lose its whole personality it's going to become something brand new. It's not going to know anything. Is it evil? Is, is, the, is the sperm evil or is the egg evil? Depends on who's looking at it. Well, in the idea of creating a baby, what creates infertility is when the womb is in judgment. I need you to hear me. When the womb is in judgment... There will be no baby. Now, what would create a judgment of a womb? Too much alkaline, too much acid in the body. Just chemical here. Just This is just alchemy. So you've heard someone say, oh, you can't heal if you're too alkaline, too light. You can't heal if you're too acidic, too negative. It's got to be just right. Now, let's look at the idea of a womb as a mother or a father, okay? Because you're either a man or a woman here. Now let's look at the egg and the sperm as my two children that I love equally. Let's say one is the problem child and one is the, the golden child, okay? And I am a mother who gave birth to both of these. And so although they are very different in nature, and they create different experiences and they have different purposes and they exist for different reasons. Am I going to love one of them more than the other? Okay. No, I might love them differently, but I am not going to love them because it's unconditional. I am going to see that the negative in that child, ha there's a reason for it. There's a purpose for it. And the positive, there's a purpose for it. And if I can love them equally, they will expand and have the reality of their dreams. And so the womb in manifestation is the container. It is you who sees your light and your dark. So we're going to play here. All right. And I'm going to show you how you're messing it up, how I was. And it's not a bad thing. It's just about awareness. It's about acceptance. So what I want you to do is think about 
someone who you love unconditionally, who feels ashamed about something. Okay, not you. Don't go there. <laughs> you will judge yourself right now, probably. But someone you love who did something that was shameful or feels shame or you would have shamed before, but you love them so you don't shame them, just recall that in your mind. And think about how you feel about them being ashamed, but, but you love them unconditionally. You feel neutral. You feel detached. All you're doing is going, I have compassion for you. Yes? Okay. Easy breezy. Find someone in your life who feels guilty about something, but you love them unconditionally. You're not guilting them. You're holding space. You're showing them compassion. Notice how you can do this for other people. So those of you who aren't teaching, you should be because you're better at this with other people than you are yourself. Okay? Oh, I'm shaming myself. I could never be a teacher. Trust me, I'm not attached to you guys' stuff. So it's really easy for me to be neutral to your dark and your light. It's very easy because I have space. You do not have space between yourself and your shame. You do not have space between you and your anger or your fear. And this is why the observer either becomes too alkaline or too dark. And so what happens is the womb, which is the observer, or the neutron, right? In the movie, The Matrix, his name was Neo. It stands for non-emotional observer. And when he became non-emotional over the bullets flying at him, he could control them. So when you can look at the dark part of you neutrally, then you will have the power of God in your hands. No joke, okay? So what I want you to do is I want us to play in this alchemy because most of you believe that in order to fulfill your dreams, you're going to need to get outside of yourself and make some money. You believe that you're going to need to get out of yourself and go find some help or support for you, for your ideas or for your visions. Most of you believe that you need something, someone outside of you to bring you something you're lacking. All of your egos believe this. Now, if you are channeling your higher self, again, highly recommend that you learn how to do this if you're not. If you're channeling your higher self, you're going back and forth with this during the day. If you are not channeling your higher self, then your ego is playing your higher self, but it's actually your spiritual ego, which is a different ego altogether, all right? it's. It's a, it's a doozy. It's, it, it morphs. If you do not have the access of your higher self, it becomes your higher self. And that's when life gets very scary. Okay. Where you just know way too much, but cannot create life the way you want. That's spiritual ego disguised as higher self. Okay. So higher self and ego love each other, but you don't know that. You don't know that your spirit was Dying to come down to all this darkness so you can manifest your desires, just like a seed cannot wait to get in some fertilizer. So within you, not only the secrets of the universe, you have all the desire you're ever going to want right in your heart. Okay? You've got all the problems you could ever want. You have maybe no resources, maybe you're battery operated in 10 different places, you feel disconnected, you feel attached to your job, you feel attached to people, it's fine. You're perfect right now where you are. And I'm gonna show you how to begin to alchemize all of this and so that you really can take the power back in your hands. Because if you look at manifest, right? It means party with my hands. And if you look at heart, H, art. You're making art with your hands. So all you need to do is a couple of times a day, you're going to be working in this alchemy treatment with yourself, but you're also going to be going back and forth, becoming neutral. See, most of you are not neutral to your joys and hopes. You have way too much loving energy on your hopes and dreams, 
And so you have to be neutral to the dreams and you have to be neutral to the pains because the mother is not going to secretly love the golden child more than she's going to love the problem child. Matter of fact, in my house, I was the, I was the caretaker. That's the role I played as a child. Okay. My younger brother was a drug addict. Who do you think got more attention? Who do you think got more money spent on them? Who do you think got more conversations about them? Who do you think got more help? So it has nothing to do with who you played in your childhood because your negative energy is getting most of your energy and it is also resisting the most. Now, when it comes to your light, that's where all your love is going. And so you are in balance. So in my alchemy of play workshop that I'm doing, and we're wrapping up in just a few weeks, we've been turning our whole lives into a fairy tale because in a fairy tale, there is always a tragedy and there is always magic and there is always a happily ever after three points. And it's eight weeks of basically all different alchemy treatments and ways to, you know, work with your shame, work with your guilt. So if you've done none of the alchemy work whatsoever and you know, and you're not channeling your higher self, I would say maybe do the alchemy workshop first. You guys, these are like $300 programs and super inexpensive. Okay. And they're going to teach you how to plug into the wall so that you don't have to run on battery operation for money and love and anything else. Okay. So let's get into this. In your right hand is your confidence. It's like in the right ring, right? It's like in your right hand, you've got confidence. You've got deserving You've got expectations. You've got peace because you know. You've got courage. You've got self-love. You've got compassion. And in your other hand, you have judgment. You have resentment. You have shame. You have guilt. You have fear. And whatever else you've got in there, okay? There's usually five aspects, but they split into tons of multi personalities if they're left uh if they're less if they're left unparented they become the feral child so either your light can become the feral child or the dark can become the feral child and i've seen both okay what we want is for you to realize that all i have to do is become detached and neutral to both my dark and my light and become the loving mother of both and i will act as the container and I will allow the electrical charge for these to come together. So let's look at this idea, you guys. In your right hand is all of your hopes and dreams. It's all the potentials. It's all the things that you just know are yours. It's the true you. It's it's you, you know, complete. It's you finished. It's you happily ever after. And in your left hand, it's where you are currently. Who I most people say, Jess, I want to get from here to here, right? All of us. Well, guess what? These, if they were in a safe container of compassion and love or allowing or just acceptance, would vibrate towards each other. What is this making? It's making a bridge. This is how you're going to get from here to here. Number one question I get asked. How? Well, if these were actually in a safe place and they weren't judged or limited and allowed, just like a sperm and an egg, the egg, negative charge, would choose the light, wrap it in darkness, anchor it in, and bloom. Brand new manifestation. So if you're not fertile, then you're probably manifesting just enough because you're using law of attraction or you're affirming lots of love and light and you're attracting a lots of negative energy around. So fine, you start today, as Buddha would say, begin again, begin again. And so your job is to be equal channel for your positive, correct channel, not spiritually bypassing, but true, authentic, higher self knowing of who you are in your heart. You've got to know your why. You've got to know 
Not what you're going to do on the planet, but why you're here. Are you here to be service somehow? Are you here to love unconditionally? Are you here to be loved unconditionally? Because that's who your higher self already is. This isn't a pipe dream. This isn't like, oh, I've got to work hard and maybe I can retire. No, you already were born rich. Inherited the whole earth. You have dominion over everything in your right side. And in your left side is the negative charge that actually creates desire. Because when I have a desire big enough, I'm going to move. When something or when I get sick and tired of something, I'm going to move towards it, even if it scares me. So what happens is the empath and narcissist begin to get attracted to each other. And if the light is not afraid and the dark is not afraid of the light, they will come together and you will manifest through your heart the neutral place of non-judgment, unconditional love, that is telepathic to every other heart. So imagine that all of our wombs were connected and when things were in, that were moving into birthing or pregnancy, then my womb would send out a pregnancy announcement to every other womb in the world that matched the frequency and they would all telepathically, telecommunication, through the heart field, talk to everyone to prepare and align for the coming child. The manifestation of whatever it is. So that means that someone would get a download to... Get, give you a house, to give you this car, to be a real estate agent, to give you the best deal in town, whatever it would be. But again, it happens in the dark, in the void, in the womb, not by you working two jobs, not by you talking 10 hours a day, by reading 10 books. It does not happen that way. So although I'm, I'm saying this is very basic and very simple, your challenge is going to be, how do I become neutral to my dark? And how do I become neutral to my light? Because a lot of times when your dark gets bigger, the light feels so far away. Now you're starting to judge your own hopes and dreams. It's like, if you go into your dream, let's say your dream is to manifest your dream partner, which was one of mine, okay? But every time I thought of him, this hand was like, remember this guy, remember this guy, remember this guy, remember this guy. And I'm like, so it just got further and further and further away until it became almost a negative. Have any of your dreams become negative? Anything that was in your unconditional loving heart now feel far away because your ego makes you feel stupid? Like, I don't know how to do that. But when you actually change when you, when you heal shame back into confidence, confidence knows things that shame doesn't know. Okay? Worthiness knows things that guilt doesn't know. Because guilt is a personality. Guilt says I must be punished. Shame says I must hide. Confidence says, I don't care if I have the booger in my nose. I'm going out there. All right? It's cool. I don't care if they make fun of me. Because I like me. And I got something to share with the world. And so as you convert these energies back into oneness, this is the law of one here, then what happens is you're birthing a whole new you that is on a new earth. You guys, we are not going to get on a spaceship and go to a new earth that's better. You are going to birth the new earth within your own womb of creation. And you will just notice that after you align with this, you're not meeting a bunch of people that shame you anymore. You're meeting a bunch of people that are loving and confident towards you, just like you are. You're not with a bunch of insecure people that are talking about the system anymore. You're talking to people who are building new systems. See, in law of attraction, we can never fix this broken world. In manifestation, we're building our own world within us. 
And through the heart center, we are telepathically communicating with other heart centers and other wombs, and we are going to fit like perfect puzzle pieces. So let's practice this. If you're not in a safe space, I'd say come back to this and review it at another time. But if you feel you have some time, then what you can do is you can sit with me and practice this and this idea, because as you're working with identifying your shame more neutrally or or practicing looking at someone else's shame neutrally and seeing how does it feel to be neutral about someone's shame? Can I practice being neutral about my shame? And then see what Seagull says. Oh no, you can't be. You can't fix that ugly nose. Okay. But what if this nose is perfect for my purpose? Right? So again, there is a whole strategy on how to get neutral with it with the dark side of you. But until you get neutral, it's kind of like if I'm a mom, which I am, I got four kids, and if they both, two of them run up to me and they're in a fight, I'm going to stay neutral, no matter what. Because I love them both unconditionally, and I know if they work together, they're going to have a lot more fun. So you want to become that neutral observer. So in your right hand, you're going to think about imagining from your heart that every hope and dream that's big, that's giant that's crazy imagine that it is going to pour from your heart into your right hand because we want to create a little space sometimes when it's too close we can't see it feel it so imagine that dream house put it in your hand dream partner put it in your hand that dream job or that dream career or getting paid to play or whatever your definition of service is for humanity put it there and look at it Notice how light it is. Notice how it kind of tingles your hand, how it feels real somehow. Because energy is alive. It's real. Positive energy actually has a sensation. It's light. It's buoyant. It's tingly. It's excited. It's powerful. Yet it doesn't weigh anything. And you can pour that into your hand and then you can observe it. See, when it's in here, it hurts because I can't have it. But when I put it out here... Wow, that's pretty cool. I love it. Okay? Just neutral. Now, over on the other side, you don't have to go into all your shame and guilt. Just put your current circumstances here. The current situations that you don't have solutions for, that you don't have money for, that you don't have opportunities for, that you don't have support for. Current circumstances that are limiting. Right? You can put some good ones in there too. It doesn't matter. And notice as you pour problems or challenges, whatever you want to call them, into your hand, it starts to immediately feel heavy. It doesn't feel light and, and, and powerful. It feels heavy and dense. You can feel the gravity of negative charge. Now, just a minute ago, this was all in your body. So if you can't lose weight, this is why. If you can't get rid of that illness, this is why. Because if these aren't making love, then they're fighting. We want these to be making love. Good. So you really want to feel this. Like all the things that you can't do. Your disempowered, your battery-operated reality, your conflict in your relationships, the state of the world, whatever it is that you're vibing towards limitation, negativity, separation, density, put it in your hand. Feel the discord. Feel the difference. Okay. And once you get done with that, you're going to then now direct the energy, keep your hands out here, but direct the energy just into your heart field. Just imagine now that these are just here, but you're going to draw your energy from your third eye or from your focal point, And you're going to just imagine, imagine hearing your heart beating. Imagine that your, that your, the lungs are pumping your blood right now and that your body is alive and it's working and just observe this vehicle for a moment, not your story, not your job, not your problems, not your solutions. Just observe this amazing quantum biocomputer, all the different veins and the, the plasma and everything that goes into your body being alive right now. Your body is breathing itself. Your heart is beating itself. Just look at it neutrally. Don't have to judge or don't have to give it a ton of love. Just look at it neutrally as if you were just watching it on a science channel. 
And then notice how when you have a happy memory or a loving memory, find one, notice that it feels like it's coming from your heart. Hmm. Notice that that's where it seems to be coming out of or from or focused upon. And this is your womb of creation. This is the part that loves all your bad stuff. It loves all your shame, all your guilt, all your humiliation. It loves all of you because it is you. It doesn't want to be anything other than you. And it also knows that you will never be able to live your dream without it. So it is super delicious and important to this vehicle, to this heart field, to this spirit, to this soul. It is essential. So as you find a happy, loving memory of your heart, see if you can now bring your awareness back to the light, back to the dark, and see if you can now, with the love in your heart, balance these up a bit, okay? You can either give some love from your light, from your higher self, if you know how to channel your higher self, to the to the dark, I'm sending you some love. I'm sending you some confidence. I'm sending you some unconditional compassion for what this challenge is right now. I'm sending you forgiveness. Whatever it is that you need right now that you're not getting from the person, place, or thing, give to yourself, either from your higher self or from your heart. It doesn't matter. You know, a baby will send mama stem cells if she gets ill during pregnancy because even the baby becomes neutral and a healer and powerful. So the very thing that's sucking the mother's life force energy away is also giving to the mother because this is how creation works. It's always win-win. No one loses in true creation. God is a genius, all right? So see if you can get these a little bit balanced. Maybe you can't and you're like, I really need to do some work on this. That's fine. Just be aware of it. Don't judge it. Okay. If you can balance the energies out, you can always go back and do this another time too and really take your time with this. I highly recommend because you're feeling the space between the joy. You're feeling the space between the pain. You're acting as the observer. We'll see now you are the Trinity. You are the law of three and now you are a creator. And so what you want to do is you want to realize that this is about union. This is about masculine and feminine energy. This is about positive and negative energy. And in order for anyone to create a child or a new home or a bag full of money, these two are going to have to come together and be in love, make love. So when these come together, you're going to make something that is love. It's not sex. It's love. When you use these to come together, the dark and the light, then you manifest the perfect guy who shames you three months later when you are not neutral. See, what you want is you want the boyfriend to come and be neutral of your darkness. You want the money to come and neutralize your darkness. And that doesn't work because the observer is always the true creator because light is always in perfection. Dark is always a limitation. And the neutral observer is the one that will contain both so they can magnetize towards each other, create the bridge, therefore create the fertilization. And yes, it, there's some ego death that happens. It's not death. It's, it's shame going back to confidence. It's guilt going back to self-worth. But to the ego... It feels destructive, just like the caterpillar feels it's being destroyed. Just like the baby gets angry and kicks out of the shell, the baby duck kicks out of the shell because it's done being trapped. So every single thing in nature will prove to you that there are no negatives and positives because the eagle is not evil when he dives down and gets the fish, unless you're a fish lover and you decide to judge that, okay? The snake is not evil when it eats the mouse because it's the negative, positive charge. So what your job is to do after this session is to play with your own alchemy or all of me 
and play is about not judging. It's about it's about tinkering. It's about looking at it. It's about feeling differently about it. And then about getting it out of your body and putting it into your hands and knowing the right hand of God is also creation. The right hand and the left hand are going to come together in the heart. And when this these materials become one, the heart through a, creates a total field and communicates to every other heart in the universe planet the universe and every single person that is in residency of that particular manifestation gets a download in that moment now if you're in judgment of any part of this you might not get the email you might not get the text message you might not be at the right place at the right time you might not believe in yourself and you oversleep for the appointment so this is where it's not just for the formula and then you can go back to your judgment. This is about living as the new the observer, about knowing that it's already done, that you already live the wish fulfilled and it is just now this process of delicious formation of energy into form. And when I love the dark part of me, then I don't have to spend 30 years in guilt. I can say, ooh, I'm going to make something out of this guilt. I've learned so much about this guilt. I understand the purpose of this guilt. And now it is the fiber that I am going to use to help other people with their guilt. It is the testimony that I can give back now. It is the confidence that I can tell millions of people how this works. You see? So when you do not... When you keep these seeds of your heart in here trapped and you keep your volume real, real low, you're not saving the planet and you're not protecting yourself. You think you're able to hide, but because law of attraction works, like attracts like, if I'm hiding shame, I'm going to manifest someone to bring that shame out. If I'm hiding guilt, I'm going to manifest someone who's going to bump it out of me and trigger it. Because creation loves you and it wants you to empty that out and re-qualify it, re-pattern it, turn it into art, okay? Just like when you're painting, you're using all the colors if you wanted to have a lot of density and contrast, okay? And so when you use all of you, that is when God or creator can now glory all of your life it can use you as the vessel it can use you to do the big work on the planet but if i'm hiding this piece and i'm judging this piece which is what i was doing okay and so i could only live this big of a life or have these type of relationships and so what i've been doing is taking each part of my life and alchemizing it and it's shifting and it's changing and this is why I'm doing this webinar is because I want you to have this knowledge, this information, this tool, so that now if you are working on what should I do, you're at least going to go in the right direction, which is using all of you. Okay? Now, I have to go, but this is a, a very easy formula. And really, the, the quality of this is about getting the dream out of your heart and into your hand. You want to create space so you can observe it, right? Are you really observing the whole forest if you're in the middle of it? No, you're feeling it, but you don't see it from the mountaintop. See it from the mountaintop. See your darkness from the mountaintop. It doesn't look so bad. It's out here. That's what I did when I was programmed. This is what the matrix told me I had to be. I had to turn down my light. This is how I survived. I love this me. Because the I and me, myself, and I are one happy family. And the inner child within loves both parents no matter how crazy they are. Okay? So your job is to work on space really solidifying your why, locking in that ability to channel higher self. And here's the thing I want you to know. It takes more energy to channel your ego than it does your higher self. It takes more training to channel your ego than it takes for your higher self. Most of you guys will be able to channel your higher self within a couple of weeks, tops, maybe a week. 
That's why I have open ended classes. I'm just going to run it. I'm going to run my channeling class for a donation of 300 bucks for as long as it takes, which means until every single person is channeling their higher self, it stays open because that's when I will be done with that. Okay. Alchemy workshop, guys. If you have lost your inner child, if you're not playing, if you don't understand this creation stuff, take that workshop. It's light, it's playful. There's lots of tools in there. And, and until then, start practicing this observer, this, this mother energy, this womb energy, this container energy, because every single thing that is alive has these three parts, right? Even your blender, the blender is the form without life. The electricity is the life without form. The cord is the womb, you see? And without those three aspects, you would have no smoothies. So you see every single thing in creation is the perfect law of three as you are. So I hope right now you have this aha that I've just been, instead of the observer, I've been the judge. I've been judging myself. I've been judging other people. And therefore, all I can use is man, a law of attraction, which means I keep getting the same pattern over again that feels different on the surface and it's not. So this is my gift to you. So if you, you know, you do nothing with it except play with this exercise, I know you're going to benefit. And those of you who are really ready for this to be your year where you really know how to create your reality, join me in one of these platforms. And the rest of you, you know, good luck. I'm so happy that I got to share this because this has been my biggest shift in 13 years. And I just could not wait to explain this simply to you. So thank you guys. I love you. And I'll see you all in the classrooms. Bye.